Hello, hello. Uh, welcome back. Um, I'm Mandy from Hope Designs and I'm just doing a quick flip cup, I think. I have an idea in mind I'm using bronze and some purple. Um, if you follow our channel, you know we have a market day coming up. So doing a lot of coasters and I have a lot of these Home Depot ones. I don't like them as much as the ones from Lowe's because if you use them for the bloom recipe, sorry about my hands, I'm like literally standing over my tripod. This um, tends to show a little bit more than when you use it with acrylic pouring. So I have a bunch of these tiles I still need to use. So this is metallic cobalt blue and it's already mixed with a mixture of glue and water, probably about a 70-30 ratio, but don't quote me on it because it's not precise. And I'm sorry in advance for the halogen light glare because um, this is still honestly a little bit runny, um, but we're still going to use it. And I have some of the Elmer's glue all and water already mixed up, so I'm just going to mix a couple of these colors and I um, I think that a bronze color would look really pretty with this Liquitex deep violet um, so that's my idea so it may turn out may not be that great but in the I can't imagine that they would be like ugly so I feel like it's gonna be a win so I started off with just a little bit of pouring medium This is so weird. I'm like standing over my camera. So I like this color because it's sort of like, um, like almost like a raisin color. So I'm going to put a little bit more paint in there. I'm so used to using the Bloom recipe that it feels like I'm using so much paint. <laughs> um, so this is Liquitex Basics Deep Violet. The other one is Artist Loft Metallic, Metallic Cobalt Blue, which is probably like the best color that Artist Loft has in my opinion. I like a lot of their colors, but that's probably a fan favorite. So notice we're just adding a little pouring medium at a time. This is a great technique if you are a beginner and you're learning to paint pour, because uh, with flip cups, a, it's just a great way to practice, especially on tiles for coasters. Great time to try if you're learning and you want to step out. These are Christmas gift ideas. Great to let your family kind of see what you're practicing. Family and friends, maybe a white elephant gift. I mean, I know there's COVID, so maybe not everybody's doing all that this year. So with a ring pour or with a flip cup, Generally, you want your paint a little thicker, and ideally, you want it to come off the stick and create a little bit of like a mound on a mound. So this may not be the greatest representation of what we're looking for, because I don't want this to be so much different than the cobalt blue. So some of these colors might blend a little bit more. So it's still a little thick because it doesn't flow freely. Still needs a little bit of the pouring medium. I also feel like my pouring medium is a little bit, maybe, maybe has too much water in it. I'm tempted to put a little bit of actual Liquitex pouring medium in it because I have a bunch of it. Um, but I don't know that I'm going to do that. So this is a little bit more what we're looking for. If you look in the cup, you can see. It stays on the surface and then disappears a little bit. I think I might mix up just a little bit more. I feel like I'm like right in your face with the mixing, sorry. And then we're gonna do the bronze. Now keep in mind, with metallics, those colors are heavier and they will thicken up a little bit. But my idea is to mix up a little bit more and then maybe I'll have some for another pour. Now, I'm not going to use silicone or anything to produce cells today. I'm just going to do a flip cup. 
I'm not going to go for cells because I'm limited in time and if I'm on a resin coasters I don't want to have to clean them off and all that stuff. Um, plus I think flip cup pours on coasters are really nice. So this is a little thick again because we just added some more paint so we're just going to thin it down. In regular acrylic pouring most of your day before you paint is spent mixing paint. So also generally speaking if you're going to do a pour and you want to avoid the bubbles which reminds me my torch is not in here um, it is a really good idea to mix your paint and let it sit um, maybe under like a damp paper towel or something so that it doesn't dry up but let it sit or even with a lid on it or whatever let it sit for a little bit, let those air bubbles settle, because all this stirring is going to produce air bubbles. But this is one of my favorite colors from Liquitex. A lot of people use the Prism Violet, and I do like that color. But I like this color better. So see, we've got... It's mixing pretty nicely, so I'm going to go get my torch real quick. Okay, the next color that I want to mix up is mostly because I don't have the Prism Pour Bronze yet, which I'm going to get soon. Uh, the Deco Art Metallics, and this is Antique Bronze, and I have not used this in over a year, so it probably needs some serious stirring, and the, the lid is kind of sealed shut. So bear with me a second here, I'm going to get a good grip on it. Sorry, I had a heck of a time getting that opened. So this is thicker, you see. For those of you who haven't used the Prism Pour from Color Art, it has a very similar like viscosity to the Deco Art. Uh, it mixes up very nicely. So when I get that, I'll show you something with the the bronze one. I don't have it yet, and I I'm going to get it. But for this pour, I decided, let's try a bronze. So, um, probably gonna regret doing that like that instead of just doing this. Ew, gross thoughts. Okay. So those of you who maybe follow our channel know, um, I generally use the bloom recipe quite a bit and I really like it. I like it for swipes, I like it for various different techniques, but I wanted to do more beginner stuff too because we do have beginner paint pourers that follow our channel. Oh my gosh, it's so much paint. So we want you to benefit too, even if you intend to grow into doing blooms and all that or you're already dipping your toe in that we still want um, there to be content for you while you're learning so when I started paint pouring I watched a ton of YouTube videos and I learned a ton of different techniques and so that was very impactful for me I kind of feel like I need to add another color in here but I'm probably going to refrain from doing that so this is, on the surface, it looks okay, but it's still too thick. And we put a lot of paint in there. So Metallics are also kind of fun because they are naturally a little bit cell reactive, and so when you use them in a flip cup, even though you're not using silicone, they tend to create cells. I also create a lot of bubbles so this kind of looks a lot more like gosh the glare is really bad this looks a lot more like the other colors but knowing metallics I know that it probably is still a little thick so I'm going to add just a smidge more of the glue water mixture and if you can't get Elmer's glue all in your location um, sorry, my autofocus is, I'm like too close to the camera and it's losing its mind. You can use like regular white PVA glue as long as it dries clear. I'm 
Okay. So it's kind of on point. Seems like it's going to be a kind of a lot. So let's set all this stuff aside. Um, if you are not familiar with kind of the deco art uh, metallics, most people really like the 24 karat gold. I, I do like that color. It's not my favorite gold, but it does. It is a fan favorite of, of quite a few people. And so when you hear people talk about that, they're talking about these little metallic tubs. But it's one of the actually the first deco art colors I got, and I haven't used it a lot. And I was pondering colors the other day, and I thought, you know, it'd be pretty cool. Now my lighting is not great in here, y'all. So I have everything set up for massive spinning in the other room. So um, I'm just not gonna relocate it today. Now I'm doing um, a flip cup pour. I like to use these little one ounce medicine cups because it's almost exactly the amount of paint that you're going to need. Keep in mind, whatever color you put down first will come out last. So just be aware of that as you're laying down your paint. Um, so whatever you kind of want the eye to go toward, that's really kind of what you want to put down first. I'm not going to put a metallic down first. Sorry, I'm like in a super awkward position. I keep mixing right in front of your face. So there's not really a perfect way to do this, but you can kind of like drizzle if you want to kind of make sure that that bottom color is not too much purple, you can do that. Sorry about the paint on my hands. In my mind, these are going to be a really cool color combo. We'll see. And I'll just do one of them with you guys and then the metallic tends to take over, so use it a little sparingly. And I imagine that bronze color being right next to that purple color will make the purple look a lot darker. That's kind of what I had in mind. Now the color you put on in the very top is most likely to get tilted off too. So, so simple, you can go like this and then flip it over. Now I like to let it sit there for a little bit and that allows the paints to kind of gel. Um, drop down a little bit you can already see well you may not be able to see from where you are but you can already see where those metallics are creating some cells now there is going to be a lot of air bubbles in here that's where you want to use your torch my torch is very very trashed out I use it for resin and for painting and I get resin all over it all the time. So just tapping it and you can let it go. You can also go like this around it and kind of create a ribbon if you want. The other thing I like to do is try to use the, the edges for the corners, but there's plenty of paint on here. And then I use the same cup for all the pores, but look inside there, that's pretty, pretty neat. You see the cells from the metallic, even in the cup. Now, you do want to torch, but keep in mind, the more you torch, the more your cells are going to form. So at this point, we're just going to lightly torch. But you see all those cells? And the lighting isn't great, but these right here are really beautiful, and they're kind of multi-dimensional. So... Now we're going to tilt, we're going to tilt a little bit, keeping in mind that the weight of your paint will kind of help you know where to go, but I'm losing a lot of the really beautiful cells on the corner. Now I'm going to bring it back a little bit, 
And I'm going to kind of go the opposite direction so we don't lose all of that. The other thing that you can do to help it is this is going to come off. You can help your corners a little bit by using some of your paint that falls down. You guys can't see what I'm doing. And then you'll keep a little bit more of the composition that's on your tile. Now these are the kind of cells you would sometimes even see with a pour with silicone and we didn't use any silicone so the metallics are helping create that effect for you. Isn't that beautiful? When I first started paint pouring I did a lot of really fun coasters. Now um, you can leave too much paint on here and that can cause your stuff to crack. So just be mindful when you're putting too much paint down. It's better to have too much than not enough, but then also be mindful that you don't wanna be so afraid of losing something that you like that you leave too much paint on there. Now some of those bubbles still need to be popped, but I also don't wanna like hyper pop them and get a bunch of pinholes. So I'm kind of inclined to leave it really like it. It's really pretty. And the purple did exactly what I said. It darkened up a little bit with the bronze, but it also really worked. And we already had the metallic cobalt blue mixed up. So all we had to do was mix up some of these other colors. So let's do one more. Okay, before I go get the other one, I just wanted to show you kind of up close. There's a lot of light, so you can't see the contrast quite as well, but some really beautiful cells, especially this top corner over here. Okay, let me get another tile. All right, we'll just do another one really quick. So I'm going to try to follow kind of a similar composition. I do have some bronze at the bottom. I'm not going to waste a new cup. Another reason I kind of like to try... Ooh, I'm looking through my phone and that did not go well. I'm probably like, hello. Um, another reason I like to try to do these is if I ever, let's say I sold these and somebody was like, I want some just like that, I would never know how I made them unless I took time to write everything down and you see how dirty my hands are. And so this really helps me to be able to try to duplicate it if I needed to. When I first started um, pouring, I had that happen a lot. People would be like, oh, I want some just like that. And I was like, oh, I don't have any idea what I did with that. And see, I'm going to end up having to mix up more of that one. So even if I don't finish this set tonight, because I recorded this for you guys, I can watch it and try to figure out what I did. Isn't that genius? So as you do your paint pouring journey, if you want to check out, like, if you want to practice by recording for kind of other people, even if you don't share it at first, it can still be really helpful. All right, now we're going to take this little guy and do the same thing. And my hands are disastrous, but that's okay. And we're going to, while we let him settle, we're going to cover these corners a little bit. These will be available for purchase if anybody is interested in them. They will be sealed with resin. Now, I do see a lot of people ask questions about sealing coasters with resin, what resin to use. Um, so, most of the resin that you buy, like on Amazon and all that, it will resin your projects. But if you are going to put hot, cold, or want to have something that's food safe, you have to pay attention to the UV um, to prevent yellowing, the UV protection, and you have to pay attention to heat tolerance. There's like a giant bubble. So if it's only like a couple hundred degrees heat tolerant, it's probably going to stick to people's hot drinks. So just be aware of that. And this one is completely different. Okay, we're going to pop bubbles now instead of later because remember what I told you, if you do 
too much blow torching and just quick 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 then once your cells are stretched out it's gonna make them crazy crazy big and after this part right here but I burned my paint you probably can't see that but it's okay we're gonna tilt it off so we're going to start here actually let's kind of meet that corner tilt and didn't get as much blue in this one it's probably underneath there somewhere because remember I was running out of it but what I like about these is they're very unique and um, you'll still see that color come through I'm sorry if you guys can hear my sinusy breathing I'm like literally standing over the tripod but look at those colors together they're so pretty and those cells look like cells you would occasionally get when you use silicone in a float cup and we won't have to do any of that washing and cleaning up the coasters before we resin it after they fully cure um, after the paint cures we can resin it and maybe resin it one more time because sometimes the air bubbles create pinholes and then put a cork back on the bottom maybe sand any drips that we might have and they're good no silicone um, I am not unopposed to using silicone to get that effect it's just kind of nice when you can get that effect occasionally without it which is one of the fun reasons for using metallics so back to the resin comment um, if you are looking for an affordable resin um, that does have good UV protection and does have um, a high heat tolerance and is food safe we have a link to KS resin in our description box with a 5% promo code and KS is priced well and it is um, a good value it's good quality resin and um, free shipping too and so can't beat that so give it a whirl I also like faux rizzle art coat and stone coat countertops kind of my go-to art resin is also a good brand so counterculture DIY is a good brand but just be aware if you're going to create coasters for people to use to eat off of and put hot drinks you need more than 80 to 90 degrees heat resistance you need several hundred or they're going to stick so thank you guys so much for watching if you're not already subscribed please do so and hit the notification bell leave us a comment let us know what you thought of these guys talk to you later